Hey everyone, so I wanted to talk through the code for this microwave app that I built. Let's take a look at the functionality first, right? So you could do time cook, say five seconds, click start. And of course it has the standard microwave functionality, right? You could say time 45 seconds, click start. And let's say maybe your food's done early, you can clear it early. Or you could do an express cook for one, two, or three minutes. So you could do like two minutes. All right, so that's the microwave functionality. Now let's take a look at the code. Hey everyone, so let's take a look at the code for this microwave app. Uh, let's start in the index.html and to run this code, to run all the code, I would do npx parcel index.html. And parcel is a bundler that pretty much takes care of everything for me, including bundling TypeScript as part of this. So I can include a TypeScript file directly in the bottom of this HTML and parcel will know how to interpret it. Um, there's also my CSS file linked at the top of the HTML and that's above the title. And so let's take a look in the body here. We have the door and the glass of the microwave. And that's of course this part. And then we have the panel and the panel is all the buttons and gizmos and whatnots. And those are of course over here on the right side. So this is the panel bit. All right. And now let's take a look at the style sheet. Um, my style sheet honestly is a bit messy, but uh, I managed to, you're going to see a lot of grid. Uh, a lot of this is grids inside of grids. Uh, so let's take a look at, yeah, the microwave. So um, the, these buttons here are a grid of their own, uh, just set up really nicely. Uh, and then this whole thing, this left side and this right side are a grid. So it's like a grid template columns, auto, auto. And then for this one, this was like grid template columns, auto, auto, auto. And uh, these I just stacked on top. And then I believe between this and these two buttons are also a grid with uh, columns, auto and auto. So that's the styling. Uh, it's pretty much the style sheet for it. Let's take a look at the JavaScript. We're not going to get too deep into it, but let's take a look. Um, also, all the source code for this is on GitHub uh, linked below in the description. Um, so in the JavaScript, we got all our, or in our TypeScript, really, we got it all inside of our source folder here. And you, like I said, main is linked here in this HTML. So let's go to main first. And in our main file is where I add a click event listener. And the click event listener is pretty much what runs this application, right? So I click um, on something on the microwave. Oops, if it lets me. There we go. I click on anything on the microwave, right? And that's what fires off, triggers pretty much everything in the application. So that's in our main function. And it runs this <coughs> change status function, which is here. Um, notice this bind on the event listener. I wanted to bind the microwave. Um, and the microwave is kind of an object or anything I did. And it is here. And we made a microwave class. And everything to do with the microwave, we added inside of this class. Now TypeScript also has these, and you'll notice I have an any here, and I, I pretty much use TypeScript for this project for the purposes of when I came back to it after two days, I didn't wanna forget where everything was, and it actually worked out. It's my first big TypeScript project, and um, it, it did what it promised to do, and that's not have me get totally lost in all the dynamic variables, right? Um, okay, so TypeScript also has these private variables that you can use with the hash in front of it, and you can't access them outside of the class. Um, so you need like getters and setters, which you see here, um, for those different private variables up top. All right, and we got this toggle glass here. That's for turning the uh, this glass on and off, right? So if we click, uh, let's do an express time. This is the toggle bit, right? It turns it yellow. And then when you clear it, it toggles it off. Um, there's the display cooked. There's the show clock, right? The show clock is what you're seeing here. Oops, can't see that. There we go, here. And then <clears throat> run timer. So all this logic here, which is a bit nested, and I need to kind of fix up a little bit, make it look nicer. So run logic is, come on, there we go. Okay, so run logic is like, run timer is when you click to start the microwave. That's what's going on here with this and the sounds and everything like that. 
All right, there was a bit more to that than I thought. Speaking of the sounds, let's take a look at those. So I got a sound folder here, um, and I got these four different sounds that I recorded. Um, I didn't record. I downloaded them from, I think it was called Free Sounds. It's not there anymore, like freesounds.org or something. And uh, there was a microwave sound file. It was like a 17-second clip that I was able to download, and then I opened it with a program called Audacity, which I'll also link in the description below. Um, and Audacity allows you to isolate individual pieces of sound and save those specific sounds. So I isolated uh, the end microwave sound, the push button sound, uh, a running sound, and I have like 10 minutes of that running MP3, and then like a start microwave sound. So that startup sound you hear specifically, like uh, the start sound would be, right? Come on. Let's try it again. There we go. So it's that click and then that initial starting sound, and then it transfers into this continual running sound. And then, of course, if you clear it early, it stops, but then the end sound would fire if you do like a short time. So let's say three seconds. Yeah, start. The end sound fires when this hits zero, right? Okay, so back to the code. Uh, and the functions below just have to do with the class above here. Uh, so we got like formatting the date, AM, PM, uh, the hours, getting, and there's a lot here to do with formatting the display. This display is a bit of a pain to make. Uh, you can look at all the code in GitHub for the full, uh, the full logic, but it's, it's a bit of a pain to make because you're dealing with strings and, oh, and numbers, right? And flipping them back and forth. And that's one thing TypeScript really helped me with in this project was the strings and numbers, uh, specifically in this date stuff and the display for this display. Um, switching back and forth. When I came back after two days, I didn't have to guess what was a number and what was a string. I already had it typed out, right? I already got the types inserted here. So I know I can look at it and it's just, it's there. It's I already know. Um, it took me about five minutes to figure out where I was again, as opposed to probably 15 or 20 with generic uh, <clears throat> JavaScript, which there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, this application, I just felt got a little too big for regular JavaScript. Um, so that's that's the microwave file, and you've seen the main file. Um, and I got a big switch statement here for each button that could possibly be pressed. I need to kind of find a way to narrow this down too. And I actually already did. I broke it out into some functions down below, but definitely not enough. So right, so if you push the time cook button, you play a certain sound, uh, you set the microwave status, clear the clear off button, um, either you do a certain thing, microwave.clear, which is attached to the class. Um, the start button, uh, you run certain logic. And then if you push anything from zero through nine, um, this was interesting because I also had to figure out from zero through three. So I had to say, hey, if well, you pushed, or one through three, if you pushed one through three and it's an express button, then run the microwave on express mode, right? So run it on the shortcut mode. Let's clear it. Run it on express mode if you just go instantly to it, right? But if you push time cook and then you push like one, two, then you don't want express mode. Um, so that, that bit of logic was also kind of complex. Uh, yeah, and that's pretty much it. You're going to see a bunch of related things related to microwave here, dot set status, microwave dot, microwave dot, and you see a bunch of those. And that's because I imported the microwave, uh, I instantiated a new microwave from the microwave class and imported it into main as the instantiation. So in the bottom of this microwave file, this is the instantiation here, and then I exported that instantiation into main. Um, I guess the last bit is the sounds. I said about the sounds before, but I didn't show you the sounds file. So this is the sounds.ts file, TypeScript, and I didn't really use any types for this. I did import the howler types, but I didn't bother using them because it's pretty straightforward here, what I'm looking at. I create a new sound for each item in the, a new howl for each item in the sounds folder. And then I export all those sounds, import them into main as sounds, and then I can call each sound from the <clears throat> sounds folder as I want to for play or stop. Uh, so that's the microwave application. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you did, please push subscribe, you know, click like. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye.